Nintendo. Whether you love them so much that you catch every single Nintendo Direct, or maybe their stuff just isn't your taste, it's undeniable that they are absolute legends in game design and publishing. Not only have these guys made games that have shaped everything we know about gaming as it is today, but they truly are experts at crafting extremely memorable, fun, and polished experiences that will stick in many people's minds for their entire existence on this planet. Despite that, it's undeniable that sometimes they've stagnated here and there when it comes to keeping their legacy franchises fresh and exciting once in a while, occasionally for the sake of money. When they do figure out a good way to refresh those legendary franchises, it just hits man like they find a way to take an old idea that excited people in the past, take that idea and absolutely twist it on its head, and put tons of effort into adding some incredible new mechanics and concepts that absolutely nobody saw coming. That old series that let you explore a bit of an 8-bit open world is now a bigger and freer than ever open world than you could ever imagine with new gameplay ideas that just work and make people excited to journey with these beloved characters again in a new but faithful way. When they pull it off, it is so very glorious when they do. And they manage to do it, usually, sometimes. Okay, when they feel like it, they'll do it. But unfortunately, Nintendo, home of some of the gaming industry's most brilliant inspired game development talent, are a choosy bunch. While the great Nintendi will put all this thought and effort into some of their projects, they just like, fucking don't for others. And it can be incredibly fucking confusing. This same company that will reach into every nook and cranny of a franchise's basics and look outside the box for new ideas that make their old franchises exciting to a modern gamer will sometimes simply rely on rehash, tired, or if you're really unlucky, some really bad new ideas for other fan-favorite series. Star Fox has been a Nintendo staple since it first debuted on the Super Nintendo over 30 years ago. An absolute juggernaut of a franchise that competed very well with your Marios and Zeldas at the time. But you sure as hell wouldn't know that as an outsider looking in. Hell, especially as a younger gamer who grew up with consoles like the Wii. But I know deep down that Star Fox was... is was such a fucking cool series that I adore so much. It's been so painful to see Nintendo mishandle it so badly in the past 15 odd years. I don't think that it was poor sales that killed Star Fox, or an inherent lack of possibilities for future installments, or an overall lack of interest from players. It was Nintendo themselves. Nintendo pulled the trigger and acted like it was such a natural progression, like there's nothing new that can be done with this series, and that the franchise sinking into the depths of the Nintendo ocean isn't something to be seen as abnormal. I've come to the conclusion that Nintendo inherently does not understand their own franchise here. They do not understand Star Fox. Now, whoo boy, you better believe they understand what Star Fox was back in 1997, nearing 30 years ago. They absolutely do understand that Star Fox was a space rail arcade shooter where funny furry people shoot aliens and just about fuck all else. But what they do not understand when it comes to Star Fox is the immense amount of potential that this franchise has that they have absolutely refused to even slightly tap into for ages. If you're not even familiar enough with your own franchise to see any of these exciting possibilities that are clear as day, well then you really don't understand Star Fox and what makes it so special. What we're gonna do is take a look at Star Fox's past what went wrong along the way, and into the vast array of possible ways to evolve the series that Nintendo simply doesn't seem to give two shits about. The original Star Fox premiered on the Super Nintendo in 1993 and blew people's freaking mind! It cannot be understated what a sight to behold this game was at the time. I may not have even been a sperm of a sperm yet, but you just gotta trust me on this one. Not only was Star Fox an unbelievable 3D showcase for the console, but it also gave gamers an uncompromised space shooter experience in 3D. It wasn't some weird faux 3D thing using 2D sprites, 
Even if the frame rate was slower than molasses at times, it was space shooting in a 3D space that could be easily understood by players, and it felt way more fun to play than anything that came before it. Now this alone would have been great and all, but Nintendo was smart. They knew that presenting the game as a bog standard space shooter was just not going to cut it. So what we got out of this perspective was Team Star Fox. Fox McCloud, the fearless heroic leader of the team. Falco Lombardi, the snarky but lovable and dependable a-hole. Peppy Hare, the older, wiser, more experienced of the group. And Slippy Toad. He was an inexperienced and clumsy fighter, but he made up for his shortcomings by being a fucking nerd. Game designers Shigeru Miyamoto and Takuya Imamura took great strides in making the characters and world that they fly through as memorable as possible. They knew that having characters that players could latch onto and enjoy the banter of during gameplay would enhance the overall experience. While there's certainly no astronomical smash like Mario, Fox McCloud and his ragtag gang of mercenaries have absolutely become cult favorites for a reason. Because of their vision, they were able to create a cast of characters that people would remember instead of like, oh yeah, that star something game. Sure, it was fun, and yeah, the 3D graphics were cool and all, but that's about it. Nintendo knew that these characters and the universe they inhabit were integral to the series' long-lasting success. Not only are some of these characters still iconic in Super Smash Bros. these days, but it was to the point that Star Fox even had its own comic, running in Nintendo Power Magazine, it ran throughout most of the entire year of 1993. Players who experience the game have great memories of the game's characters and the banter they have during gameplay. Along with the creative worlds the team were able to make with such extremely simple polygonal graphics. Those who were lucky enough to have access to the comic were treated to a really fun and exciting run that expanded upon the already existing character dynamics and their lore. This was a really smart way to make folks more excited about the game whether or not they even played it yet. In its core, Star Fox is a fun space arcade shooter, but that investment that was built up with the Star Fox team's fight against Andross in that first game is what made it truly special. Due to all of these important elements and the fact that they just made a damn good game, Star Fox was actually a big success on the SNES. So much so that fans eagerly awaited for the inevitable sequel which would unfortunately be canned shortly before the launch of Nintendo's next console, the Nintendo 64. Basically, 3D graphics were advancing so quick at the time, Nintendo didn't want to look like they're behind the times just before releasing their next console, which was leaps and bounds beyond what the SNES could achieve in 3D. The interesting thing is that Star Fox 2 was completely finished. I've played it. It's really dang good, and despite being cancelled, its influence does show up in later titles in the series. I'm not going to dedicate an entire segment to the game because of this reason, but points about it will show up later. Luckily, even though Star Fox 2 got shit cubed, that didn't mean that Nintendo wasn't ready to bring Star Fox to the next exciting generation in a big way. Eventually, in 1997, we got Star Fox 64. This game ended up being a bit of a soft reboot for the franchise. As in, story and presentation wise, this game was acting as a viable replacement for the original game on the SNES. And while this mindset would later on become an issue, I feel like just this one time that rebooting the series was a truly brilliant idea. The original Star Fox was a good game, but since its direct sequel was cancelled, creating a reboot would allow the team to expand upon everything they did with the original Star Fox. Star Fox 64 managed to keep up and improve upon the on-rails arcade 3D shooting gameplay of the original. And while they certainly could have just stopped there, the developers want to utilize the new capabilities of the N64 by expanding the types of space combat players could enjoy. With the addition of open arena dogfights, on foot combat in multiplayer, and brand new vehicles like a submarine and a fucking awesome tank, it's pretty clear that the devs' intentions were to make 64 more than just a 3D linear shoot 'em up. Each and every stage was given a lot of care and given a completely unique atmosphere and sometimes different gameplay mechanics. Every planet you flew through in this game felt like a real place with its own history behind it. Not only did we get the same fun banter from the Star Fox team, 
Hey, Einstein, I'm on your side! But the villain Andros was turned into a more intimidating villain than before because they gave him some really intense buildup near the end of the game. This game's intro alone does an excellent job at making you care more about the character's struggles than ever before. Adding a story of betrayal that led to the death of Fox's father really added a smidge of edge that this series really needed. There were even new characters to meet along the way, like Bill Gray, Cat Monroe, and a new rival team of mercenaries, Star Wolf. Despite many Nintendo 64 games lacking voice acting due to the cartridge storage limitations, Star Fox 64 featured fully voice acted dialogue during cutscenes and gameplay. You're becoming more like your father. Thanks to that, the character dynamics and lore were cleverly expanded upon without distracting too much from the fast paced action. This time they focused on some more memorable character interactions that either sometimes explained or implied important details about the cast relationships with each other. For example, Bill Gray wasn't just some random dog who joins the Star Fox team for a single battle during a single level. He's an old schoolmate of Fox's that he's seeing for the first time in ages. That gives their dialogue a bit of a more nostalgic feeling than what you'd usually get with the other characters Fox is around with all the time. Pigma is one of your enemies from the Star Wolf team. He could have easily been some random asshole who you're just tasked to fight against throughout the game. But no, not only did his past betrayal with Fox's father lead to his death, he's proud of this fact and he will gladly remind you that he does not give a fuck. Daddy screamed real good before he died. All in all, 64's dialogue and voice acting, it's not extremely deep and it can be corny sometimes but I'd say it's presented almost like an extremely entertaining Saturday morning cartoon that the entire team put tons of effort and love into. 64 is an incredible game and it still holds up today. If they had just stuck to keeping this like the original, where it's just a straight up on-rail shooter in, in the R-Wing and there's no other vehicles, no other types of gameplay, it certainly still would have been an improvement upon the original, but I don't think it would have been nearly as memorable or influential as a reboot slash sequel. Dogfights with more open combat, expanded lore, and extremely memorable characters, along with the fast-paced on-rails gameplay featured in the original, all of these factors are what made 64 such a massive achievement. With all these factors in mind and the overall care and quality Nintendo put into the game, it's really easy to see why 64 was the peak of success for the Star Fox franchise. Luckily, we did not miss out on a cancelled sequel on the Nintendo 64 this time. Uh, uh, kind of. The GameCube era is where things get a little weird, but not necessarily in a bad way. This is just where things get a little confusing. 64, with all the things that have evolved and changed, it was still largely an on-rails, linear space shooter. But to me, it's very clear that at the time, Nintendo really did want to expand on the possibilities of the space combat in the series. But some things just weren't technologically feasible in the early Nintendo 64 days. Meanwhile, the skies were truly the limit on GameCube. It was a much more capable machine. They would return to the structure, eventually, but Rareware, developers of hit titles such as Super Glove Ball and video game preservationist Teasing Simulator. They were working on a little adventure game on the N64 called Dinosaur Planet. At some vague point in the game's development, it was decided that the game would no longer be an original IP, but instead a new Star Fox title for the sake of brand recognition. Nintendo was basically like, oh, Rare, you're making a game about furries in space? We already have those! So sometime after the shift to a Star Fox title was made, it was also decided that the game would switch from N64 development to the brand spanking new GameCube. Unfortunately, it's pretty clear that switching to GameCube when the game was already so far in development on N64 definitely caused some rushed elements and issues in what was eventually released as Star Fox Adventures. Despite all that, those incredibly talented developers at Rare still managed to put out a game that was overall polished pretty well and enjoyable. The complete shift 
from on-rail space shooting to Zelda-style adventure. Oh, you better believe that was very divisive. Despite all that, the game's reviews at the time were actually really good. Despite taking place in the Star Fox universe, it was a completely different kind of game. But in my opinion, it's still an enjoyable time. Because it was just such a complete offshoot, I'm not gonna linger on adventures too much longer. It was just too much of a big departure, and it's not really relevant to the topic at hand. But I will say, as much as I do like adventures, there also comes its biggest issue, which all stem from the game having been so rushed as an early-gen GameCube title. Other than Fox himself, all of his other lovable companions are unfortunately thrown to the wayside to save on development time, which is just an absolute shame. If these characters could have been more involved in the game and had more dialogue with Fox throughout, I think that it would have added so much to the overall experience. And lest we forget the blue fox in the room... Not me! No, not her! Yes, Crystal. A fox with boobs. She was honestly a wonderful new character and a great addition in my eyes, but originally she was supposed to be the main character of the game in Rare's original vision on N64. That's not to say that I would have minded Fox becoming the main character, but due to rush development, they had to take her out of the picture very early in the game. So as much as I do love her design and her personality, at least the little we get of it in this game, we really don't get to know her that well. And even characters from past games, we don't get to see much of them at all. Despite that, it's a cool game that has some cool ideas. But all these last second changes just helped keep it from being the perfect Star Fox franchise shakeup that fans deserved. Now that Star Fox got such a drastic change of pace out of its system, it was finally time to get back to the space combat Star Fox fans knew and loved. Star Fox Assault may be the most important Star Fox game when it comes to explaining exactly what Nintendo is missing out on when it comes to the future of this franchise. In my eyes at least, Assault is a great game. But as I go into what this game is about, I'm not going to pretend like it isn't more technically flawed than the high that was 64. At least when it came to single player. It had the best multiplayer in the series. It was so much fun. 64 is famous for featuring branching paths that encourage replayability through the different levels. Assault did not have this. Gameplay wise, there was also an overall level of polish that 64 had that Assault was unfortunately lacking a bit in comparison. Star Fox Assault, also underrated. Um, not perfect, but it's fun. However, the amount of gameplay enhancements, innovations, and change-ups that Assault gave us while keeping true to what made Star Fox such a beloved franchise in the first place is absolutely commendable. On-rail shooter stages were still accounted for with the same great gameplay and enhanced presentation. Those somewhat open dogfight locations you'd find in 64 were entirely expanded to entire maps featuring many objectives to complete each stage. Ignoring adventures, Assault was the first game to allow players to control Fox for on-foot shooting combat. The ability to jump in and out of vehicles on the fly in levels was a phenomenal addition. It was just extremely exciting to be able to wipe out a base full of soldiers and then hop into my R-Wing at any time for space dogfights outside. It was just so fucking cool. Now, Assault was a very short game, so those ideas could have certainly been expanded upon further. We'll get more into that later. But having replayed this one for the first time in years, I was pleasantly surprised to see just how much thought and effort was put in to enrich the space combat of Star Fox. Assault's innovations don't even stop there. I honestly think that Assault is the peak of the series' story, presentation, and characters. 64 was impressive and definitely an important stepping stone but like I said earlier, it did have more of a quality Saturday morning cartoon feel. There's nothing necessarily wrong with that at all. Star Fox does need to keep that goofy fun factor to keep it from becoming the last of Fox. But it was simply the beginning to giving Star Fox the mature edge that many fans, including myself, have always thought that Star Fox could excel in. Miyamoto himself also felt this way about Star Fox at one point, he saw it as a serious sci-fi world full of mature storytelling possibilities. Assault's dialogue may not be as immediately quotable as 64's, but it really is quite well written, and it expands upon the relationships of all the characters in a great way. Crystal comes back from adventures and even takes Peppy Hare's place on the team, and she's finally given a time to shine. She does end up making for a great addition to the Star Fox team, and you get a much better read on her personality. Assault 
finally moves on from Andros and gives us a new threat that's built up nicely and leads to some genuinely freaky and upsetting moments in the story. Back in 64, it did do a really good job building up stage atmosphere with small intro cutscenes and by changing up gameplay and scenarios and clever ways between stages. Assault expands on this by adding more cutscenes, including full debriefing scenes in between stages that allow us to see the characters interacting outside of their ships a little bit. And a lot of the stages change up objectives and gameplay scenarios while you're playing the same stage, which makes for an even more dynamic experience. Visually, the game still looks stunning, with a lot of thought put into the character, creature, and environmental design. And for a series already known for excellent music, Assault really takes the cake. Many people don't know that Star Fox Assault was one of Nintendo's first games to receive a soundtrack with a full-on orchestra, and it goes insanely hard. New and old Star Fox tracks sound absolutely gorgeous and full of life. Ugh, it's so good! It really makes you feel that at the time, Nintendo still considered Star Fox a big deal, just like its fans. Despite any potential flaws that would come up during developing this thing, they really were putting their all into it, actually evolving the franchise while still respecting what made the 90s games so special. Assault made it clear that Nintendo knew Star Fox couldn't stay the exact same game forever, and they were coming up with some great new ideas that could absolutely be expanded upon even further in future titles. I really don't think that you have to even fully enjoy Assault as a game to acknowledge that fact. The GameCube era was a bit rocky for sure, but if Nintendo had continued course in the right direction, we could have easily gotten the greatest Star Fox game of all time on a future console, featuring more polished, evolved, and fresh gameplay ideas and presentation. Spoiler alert, we never f got that. We'll return to all that missed potential shortly, but first, we have to quickly cover how Nintendo has put the franchise into a sad, sorry state of life support. This is where the Star Fox franchise saga becomes truly... I don't even know. Really weird. Just over a year later, Nintendo released Star Fox Command for the Nintendo DS, making this the series' first ever handheld title. It was co-developed by Nintendo EAD and Q Games, who are otherwise famous for such classics as Frogger in Toy Town. I'm just gonna go ahead and be straight up with you guys. Command fucking sucks. Beyond being technically playable, it is absolutely painful to go through. Nintendo's approach with this game was shockingly sloppy, even when compared to their other lowest points developing and publishing any game software. Star Fox Command actually did bring some potentially interesting and game-changing mechanics to the table. This time around, the main gameplay loop had some strategy game elements. You would use the DS's touchscreen to command your pilots around a map while taking turns with the enemies. When one of your pilots ran into an enemy fighter, you would take control of the R-Wing in a 3D dogfight to collect a certain amount of things from enemies. Once you collected all of the whatever the fuck these things are I don't care in a particular stage without exceeding the turn limit, you officially completed the stage. I think that taking these strategic elements from the cancelled Star Fox 2, especially for a handheld only Star Fox title, was a fantastic idea. On paper, but in practice, the strategy command parts of the game are actually the highlight. The DS stylus works great for guiding your team around, but the relatively shallow RTS gameplay really does not make up for how boring and unfun the actual combat segments are. You shoot a few boring enemies in a little 3D arena, repeat, make circles with the stylus to defeat a mother base, repeat, repeat, repeat ad nauseum. Nothing about this title has any of the excitement of the previous Star Fox games, not even in the slightest. The overall presentation is also quite possibly genuinely the worst thing Nintendo has ever let slip through. It's at least pretty low. It also weirdly features a Ken Penders ass art style that looks so ugly. I went from wanting to go to a party to hang out with these characters, to want him to throw them in a fucking wood chipper. I mean, just look at this shit. It's awful. Otherwise, all the other visual and audio presentation is just so dull. No soul whatsoever. Even ignoring all the technical limitations on DS, Assault and Command really are night and day. It's insane to me that this game came out just a year after. Now you may be thinking, Rennie, 
Are you confused? You said new ideas are what the series needed, and this game has those. And yes, that is absolutely true. Unfortunately, if you haphazardly throw new ideas into a sequel without any care or foresight into how it could damage the overall experience, that can be just as dangerous, if not worse, than stagnation. I think that careless approach to this game is made most clear in how the game handles the Star Fox characters and lore. This is the first time I've ever seen that none of the characters feel remotely like themselves. Fox himself is suddenly just a careless asshole to almost everyone, simply for the sake of creating manufactured dramatic moments for the story. This game has an absolutely absurd nine endings, which the way I see it was done in part to try and make up for the extremely repetitive gameplay, very short runtime, you can beat this game in half an hour, and complete lack of vision for the game in the first place. Every character here is either completely out of character or on a very dull autopilot, which oh boy, definitely makes all of the dialogue and story bits either incredibly boring and or pure cringe to read through. This game's story and dialogue does not come off as a natural and carefully thought out evolution of what came before it, but instead a completely nonsensical an edgy fanfic written by a teenager. Again, this game has nine endings, which I feel had to be because the writers just had absolutely no idea how to continue the story of Fox and the gang. I feel like if you put some thought into it, it would have been pretty fucking easy to settle on something, but apparently not because they decided to make a bunch of really lame first draft story ideas and just put all of them in the game. But a lot of these issues with the game wouldn't matter whatsoever if Nintendo didn't make a bizarre decision to allow the series to get backed into an inescapable corner with this game. Many of these endings provide a solid ending, as in ending of the series for the Star Fox characters. This is not treated like a handheld side adventure. This game treats multiple of its endings as an ending to the series as a whole. I read in an interview that only the first half of the game is supposed to be canon, but I really see this as a sad and, again, careless excuse. If all of these insane endings are not canon and only the first half of the game is, Everyone is still completely out of character, so what would the point of the game even be? You're telling me that the game's story just ends before the conflict presented against the stupid fucking boring space fish even can- You're trying to tell me that the game's story just ends before the conflict presented against the stupid fucking boring space fish even concludes? <laughs> what? And even if this really were the case, I have the feeling that after this game, Nintendo was way too nervous to even touch the series again, as is after this story became so fucked up by a single title, even though it is literally something that they for some reason allowed to happen. Aside from a pretty solid remake of Star Fox 64 for 3DS, we would not see the return of Team Star Fox for another decade. Now, I'm not going to be the kind of guy that just shits on Nintendo's Wii era blindly. The Wii's motion controls were a big deal for a reason, and Nintendo did manage to put out some truly great games for the thing, including titles that utilized the console's controller in a thoughtful way. Nintendo never forgot about Star Fox, technically, but unfortunately, they did completely forget what the franchise was building to on the GameCube. Miyamoto started experimenting with a motion-controlled Star Fox project for literal fucking ages. While we never ended up seeing a Star Fox demo on Wii, I guess nothing ever got to a point that Miyamoto was happy with on the console, we didn't get any look at a new Star Fox until Nintendo finally entered the HD era of gaming around the time the Wii U was first revealed. Miyamoto was seen testing out a Star Fox demo using the gamepad's motion controls. Nintendo officially revealed a brand new Star Fox game for Wii U, Star Fox Zero. No amount of funny puppets could make up for how much of an astronomical disappointment Zero ended up being. It's crazy to think about now with how much of a smash success the Switch has been, but just one generation ago, Nintendo was really struggling hard with the Wii U. Not only was it their worst selling home console of all time, but Star Fox Zero was released in 2016. The Switch dropped in early 2017, so this was at the tail end of the Wii U's life. Nintendo was fully aware of this and desperate to save face as much as possible, 
by getting a few more titles out for their dying rectangle. Zelda needed a bit more time before it came to Wii U, and it was set back to boost the Switch's launch as well as a cross-gen release. And Mario's next big adventure? That was being developed in the background to try and improve Nintendo's chances with their next home console hybrid. So without many options, they went for the Star Fox demo that they've been allowing Miyamoto to fuck around with aimlessly for years on end. The result of this was Star Fox Zero, a boring, lifeless, painfully mediocre arcade shooter experience. Nintendo made yet another terrible decision to completely reboot the series again, just like Star Fox 64 did way back in 1997. 64! 64! Nintendo fucking loves Star Fox 64! They have that shit memorized! In the meanwhile, they were making a really smart decision by evolving Mario and Zelda in a new, exciting direction to get the attention of those without a Wii U, but Star Fox was not so lucky. Zero managed to regress the franchise in literally every single way. What are Zero's best moments? Where do they come from? 64. The best character moments, 64, but with less enthusiastic direction and voice acting. The gameplay, it's just 64 again. Zero really is a glorified remake of 64. Again! But without any of the heart and soul that was poured into it in the first place. Zero's motion controls were already a bit dated by this point, but good motion controls are supposed to enhance fun and interesting gameplay that's already there. Unfortunately, Zero uses motion controls as a crutch. The game's branching paths have a lot less depth than 64's. Every character and story moment is taken directly from 64. Levels, gameplay, set pieces, all 64. And yet somehow they managed to make it so boring. I could easily go into a full review, but this game is the definition of nothing to write home about. It's just Star Fox 64 again, but now it's really boring and it has more occasionally frustrating controls. People ragged on this game's controls when it came out, but if I'm going to be completely honest, I feel like this game's controls are the least of its problems. The gameplay and presentation are some of the most dated and dull I've ever experienced in a new game from the past decade. Like yeah, I'm shooting shit and there's lots of explosions, but there's just nothing here to get me invested, especially when it's mostly a retread of old shit. I wish I could get a little more descriptive with why exactly it's so dull, but it's just kind of hard to do that when there's nothing to even comment on. It's so bizarre that a game code developed by Platinum is so mind-numbingly boring. A developer known for crafting such bombastic, memorable, over-the-top action games. My guess is that it was most likely just due to a lack of any direction on Nintendo's end. Despite being an entire decade apart, both Command and Zero are what I think led to the downfall of Star Fox in completely opposite ways. At this point, it's just so, so clear to me that Star Fox is in desperate need of a proper evolution that builds up what the franchise was doing from Super Nintendo to GameCube. What we got on DS and Wii U were strange gimmicky control experiments gone wrong. The new shiny controls were first on the developers' minds, not using those said controls to actually change things up in a way that was actually fun or engaging. Command could have been treated as a simple misstep, but Zero was really the thing that hurt this incredible franchise so badly. A decade of just fucking around with motion controls blindly, just to end up shitting out a desperate last second Wii U title? It's just so sad. I believe the series can absolutely live on in the modern era. The potential is so there, and Nintendo doesn't even seem to see it at all. They just need to care. And that's apparently just too much to ask when it comes to Star Fox. I know you're all waiting so patiently to hear more thoughts about Star Fox, but we're going to take a quick break because I have my first ever sponsor. Yes, my first ever sponsor, and that sponsor is... Me, Rennie, yes, just me. What a funny joke. <laughs> so original. Anyways, I have uh, channel memberships now. So if you want to support me in any way, I'm between jobs, uh, kind of struggling a little bit right now. But if you're able to and want to, I have channel memberships. Um, lots of cool perks with that. If you're a longtime subscriber or just want to support me, if you like this video, up to you. But I'm going to be streaming more in the next few months, so you get exclusive live stream emotes, special access to a 
Discord role and members only channel. You'll be credited in every video because you guys are awesome. All of my old streams, you'll have access to those recordings and you'll get exclusive video updates and previews. So any updates I give that are more special, specific, you'll get to see those only. And more stuff I'm working on. So if you want to support me in any way, channel memberships are the best way to do that. And I really appreciate it if you consider it. If you can't, that's okay. I'm just glad you're here watching. So um, enjoy the rest of the video. Before we move on and talk about how Star Fox could potentially live on in the modern era, let me address a few foxes with boobies in the room. Due to Nintendo's impressively awful mishandling of this franchise, I've noticed that a lot of younger Nintendo fans assume that no one ever really cared about Star Fox in the first place. That it's outdated and has no real potential of attracting new fans outside of furries, which I think is absolutely not the case. People really downplay just how big of a deal Star Fox used to be. A lot of older Nintendo fans adore Star Fox and for good reason. The series used to actually bring something different to the table when compared to other Nintendo franchises. It had a little bit of an edge, fast paced and fun arcade shooting gameplay, and intense memorable moments in every level. Something certainly a bit different than what you get from the more somewhat laid back experiences like Mario, Zelda, and later on especially Animal Crossing. I think all of this is made pretty clear when you take a look back at the series sales history, which peaked with Star Fox 64 and slowly declined with every subsequent new release. Was this because the entire gaming audience, which has done nothing but grow larger by the way, just started rejecting Star Fox because it never had any value? I definitely don't think so. The original Star Fox, that had the benefit of coming from Nintendo's extremely innovative 3D tech. And I don't believe Star Fox 64 would have been the best-selling game in the entire series if word of mouth about its high quality didn't spread so far. Sure, some copies came with a rumble pack, which likely gave it a bit of a boost, but I don't think that most people were buying the game for this accessory alone. And the GameCube was not exactly Nintendo's most successful home console, so I think that nearly 2 million sold for a game that completely abandons the series' original gameplay, and nearly 1 million copies for a game released close to the end of the GameCube's lifespan, is pretty damn respectable. You gotta keep in mind, in 2005, the GameCube's best-selling game hardly cracked 2 million units, and it was a Mario title, so Star Fox hitting half those numbers is honestly a win. The DS was quickly outpacing the GameCube by a long shot in 2006, so Command selling less than half a million? I think folks looked at the game and just knew it looked like shit. And then, like Assault, Zero also released at the tail end of a struggling console's lifespan, only selling just over 400,000 copies. Considering it was being outpaced so badly even by Wii U games released in previous years, I think that folks could just see the game wasn't worth their time and money. And it's sad to say, but I can't remotely blame anyone for feeling negatively about Star Fox when this is all the series has been giving us for the past nearly two decades. Star Fox has potential, but Nintendo lack of care has killed it for the time being. So, how could Nintendo theoretically go about continuing Star Fox in a way that will actually excite modern gamers who may not be so familiar with the series? Well, contrary to how Nintendo seems to think about it, there's certainly plenty of options. Nintendo could go with ignoring Command and Zero to continue the story where it left off in Assault, but I honestly don't feel like they'd ever find that to be a viable option. Because, to be fair, it would require new players to be aware of several games from decades in the past. What I think could work is a soft reboot. Not another fucking remake of Star Fox 64. We're never doing that again, please. But I think there's ways to reintroduce this world and cast of characters in a way that makes sense. We've gotten so many versions of 64 at this point, you could just keep that or zero or whatever as the technical beginning of the Star Fox canon. From there, put the Star Fox team in new exciting adventures that could take place after Andross is defeated. Resist the urge to recycle things from old games when you don't have to. Clearly, even older fans haven't been receptive to that, so you just need to focus on making something new out of it. But what about some of the new characters from like the GameCube era? You could definitely keep them around. You just gotta find a way to reintroduce them somehow. 
For example, Fox could still meet Crystal on Saria and she eventually joins the Star Fox team. You just need to reset some of the baggage and you could reintroduce some old characters, meanwhile introducing some new stories. Miyamoto wanted the series to be seen as mature, without going too far and sucking out the fun. This is the perfect approach in my book. To get a glimpse of what the series' future could be in the writing department, you need look no further than the indie animated adaptation of Star Fox, A Fox in Space. I really mean it when I say that fans understand this world and its characters way better than Nintendo does. A Fox in Space is an absolute masterpiece of visual storytelling. The creator, Matthew Gafford, managed to keep every single member of the cast in character while expanding upon them in ways that feel truly human. Normal words, but a fox guy. They all have problems and character quirks that you can get behind and relate to. That's not to say that Star Fox needs to have the more intense violence and cursing like a fox in space does. I'd say a T rating is perfect for the franchise. But you can still give something a mature edge without including too much of that. Give the cast some serious, intense threats to face, balanced drama and trauma to deal with without making it feel too forced or weird. Sure, on the gameplay side, Star Fox is just a bunch of funny animal people shooting things in space, but the lore, story, and characters are what help make it something special. Also, I just wanted to mention that A Fox in Space Episode 1 has eight times as many views as Zero has sales, and the official Zero animation has 10 times as many views as that game has sales. I know watching something on YouTube is free and buying a game costs, but I think that still says something. But what about the gameplay side of things? That's really important, of course, in a video game. While some fans feel the same way I do, I think, I've also known some that I'd describe as Star Fox gameplay purists. I just, I think their perspective on this series is misguided. I do believe that on a technical level, a fully on-rails arcade shoot-em-up can still 100% be fun and expanded upon in a new modern way. I'm just gonna be real, I don't think that making another straight-up on-rails shooter in the R-Wing, straight up just like the originals all over again, is going to attract a new audience to Star Fox, which it desperately needs. I've seen it be said that, in theory, a new Star Fox game with the purely on-rails R-Wing shooting gameplay could be made and released as a budget title, like $40 or less. That's completely true, and it'd likely sell a bit better than if it were fully priced, because it's very difficult to sell something like that in the modern day. And while a game like this could still easily be a better experience overall than Zero, Zero is an example that makes it clear that simply just going back and making a new game with the on-rails traditional gameplay is not going to guarantee any sort of fun factor or success for Nintendo. And I know, people have mixed feelings on Star Fox Assault as a whole, I feel like reception has been growing somewhat in recent years, but those who feel more negatively about it, that's totally understandable. However, when people point to the on-foot combat in the game as its complete downfall, I personally kind of roll my eyes a little bit. I can totally see why some aren't fans of its utilization in the game itself. It is a tad clunkier and less refined than shooting things in the R-Wing and other vehicles for sure, but that does not mean that the idea itself was a bad one at all. I feel exactly the opposite actually. Just from the ability to hop in and out of any vehicle at any time, going from shooting ships out in the air, then landing to defeat enemies on the ground to get more close and personal would be extremely fun if done right. Just think of it this way. Imagine if folks had the same perspective when it comes to Mario. Super Mario Odyssey expanded Mario's moveset in some really great and clever ways, utilizing his new cat friend Cappy and the ability to command certain enemies and objects with completely new ways of navigating stages. Back in my day, that Mario character kept his feet on the ground. Unless he was making a jump, his big Italian tootsies were on that ground. I want to see boots on the ground, Mario. Get your soul out of that fucking Goomba. Star Fox doesn't have to stick to just on-rail arcade space shooting that constantly moves at a forward trajectory. Just like Mario doesn't have to jump to the left and right anymore. When you really get down to it, Star Fox is about space combat in general, not just the on-rails experience. 
There are ways to respect this core and expand upon it in new fresh ways at the same time. So if you look at Star Fox and say, I better see Fox's big fat juicy ass in that Arwen cockpit at all times. If he is outside at any point, I'm not interested. I just personally feel like that's a misguided takeaway when it comes to what Star Fox is and the issues that later titles in the franchise have. Before we continue, I just also want to quickly say that I'm not going to be talking about Starlink Battle for Atlas in this video. And just because the Star Fox cast were slapped into the Switch version doesn't mean it's relevant whatsoever. Just want to make that clear, I really don't consider it a Star Fox game just because of some weird cross-promotion thing. More like Star Stink, Battle for Fartless, <laughs> and just kidding, I really don't care about it in any way. What could Nintendo do exactly to wrangle in a new audience on the gameplay side? That's the thing, there are so many possibilities that I won't even be able to cover them all in this video. This franchise has so much potential in every category, story, gameplay, presentation, that is simply mind-boggling that Nintendo themselves can't think of anything apparently. There's so many options that when I've posted about this topic in the past, folks always drop cool ideas that I never even thought of myself. If Nintendo put the effort in to get a team together to brainstorm some really solid ideas on how to evolve Star Fox properly, it wouldn't take them that long to come up with something great. They just also have to make sure that these ideas are cohesive and handled with care, of course. We definitely don't need Command Part 2. I'll present just a few potential ideas, but the point really is that the potential is there, and it's being completely untapped. And if any of these ideas sound somewhat suspect or lame to you, that's totally fine. I just want to show how much could be done. I'm not a developer being paid to make a new Star Fox game. So while many ideas definitely exist, I realistically just don't have the time or development experience to ensure that any of these new chosen concepts come to a cohesive whole. That's what the development team would have to do. But with that being said, how about we let players fight enemies in lots of different forms? Arwing, Landmaster, on foot as their favorite member of the Star Fox team. That in particular, why not let us play as more characters than just Fox? Star Fox has such a great cast of characters, you could give them all special abilities that serve to enhance the experience of the players that choose to use them. Allow players to choose stages in whatever order they like. Branching paths in 64 were cool, but what if you could just travel to any planet at any time and take multiple different missions as you please? I feel like that would be an amazing addition. Even if the combat scenarios are more open in nature, there are ways to keep them fast paced and exciting. You could definitely keep some on rail segments here and there to pay homage to the past titles, but either way, you just gotta keep up the non-stop action when you're in a mission or stage. Give us enemies to deal with on all planes of the planet, to make us use all the different vehicles and weapons at the player's disposal. I'd love to see more in-depth cutscenes to make the story more intense than ever before. Put some real effort behind the presentation. Allowing players to see what the cast is like outside of the regular combat can elevate how you feel about them while you're playing the game. Even outside of cutscenes, put care into making every character interaction fun and engaging during gameplay. Let the cast bounce off of each other in a way that feels natural, as opposed to just being a random creature that just happens to be sitting in the cockpit of a friendly or major enemy ship. One neat little thing Star Fox Zero did give us is a cool little cartoon that gave us a rare, proper look at Fox's homeworld, Corneria. Every Star Fox game makes protecting this place such a big deal, but we never even really get to see it outside of the action. It could be completely optional, but maybe let us explore Corneria to get to know the people that live there, maybe even other planets too. It could give the player a better sense of what these worlds are like, and with that, even more drive and hype behind getting the chance to protect them. Again, I'm not asking for Star Fox to become the last of Fox, but little bits of extra world building like this could go a long way. 
Maybe providing the opportunity for a little bit of space and planet exploration could be cool in regular gameplay too. Off the top of my head, I'm not 100% sure how this concept could be implemented in the game well, but it's something to think about that's possible within the world presented. Another big one that I think would excite people is customization. Let players not only choose their favorite characters, let them find items throughout missions and planets to upgrade their pilots and vehicles in whatever way they want. Custom builds could allow for every player to engage in missions in completely different ways. You could even maybe add a risk reward system for missions and battles. Allow players to choose more difficult missions in exchange for better upgrade materials. What we definitely want to avoid while expanding Star Fox gameplay is repetition. That's something that I think is extremely important. This means that coming up with lots of unique scenarios for each mission is very important. You can't let a mission structure repeat itself too many times. When a player reaches a new planet, they should be thrilled to find that they have to approach a new mission in a completely new way than the ones before it. If every planet just features basic air dogfights over and over again, players are going to get bored quick. Expand the shooting and aerial abilities of the R-Wing, even the chicken walker thing transformation. That's cool. Keep that keep the Landmaster, you could add new vehicles that help the player tackle different combat and traversal scenarios, and when you have to get down and dirty, give Fox and Pals a wide variety of weapons to choose from. I think that allowing them to traverse the ground more quickly with sprinting and warping or whatever other abilities give them a melee attack when enemies get too close. Crystal literally already has a magic staff thing. I'm not saying that Star Fox should become a completely different game, like Zelda or some other franchise, but giving players some balanced variety and options would be simply incredible. And I think that kind of thing is going to be the key to letting the franchise evolve in a good way. Star Fox should still be focused on space combat, but it will never be a big success story again if Nintendo doesn't try some new things that could be easily expanded upon with this kind of gameplay. Okay, so I already know this video is pretty long as it is, but I have something to add real quick, and I'm going to do it casually because this video has already taken me quite a while. Um, but last second, after I already finished the script, I was informed by a friend of mine about Star Fox Armada. And I'm just going to be using Did You Know Gaming footage on this. I've already worked so long at editing. I'm just going to throw this in last second. So basically, an employee at Retro Studios proposed a new Star Fox title called Star Fox Armada, but it was never picked up, never released, never even worked on. Essentially, this game did take a lot of the ideas I presented earlier and some that I've heard from others about expanding the franchise, evolving it for the modern era. But there's a few other things, like they wanted to focus on the mercenary aspect of Star Fox, like they want to have bounties being put on other players, more of a multiplayer uh, community going on in this thing. There's also a heightened focus on protecting Corneria and sending supplies that way, upgrading your ship with materials. One cool thing I never even thought of was that they were going to let you create your own pilots, so basically your own Star Fox OCs, kind of like the best part of Sonic Forces. It's kind of a cool idea. I'd love to be able to make Rennie and Star Fox. That'd be freaking awesome. All of the gameplay is going to have a more open mission structure, picking different planets like I mentioned. The only difference was going to be that it was going to be all in ship. The only strange thing about this proposal is that they wanted to have the whole game style be like in the original puppet style, like in the original Star Fox, which would have been weird, but could have been cool. I just don't know how they would have gone about that, but sounds interesting. Either way, this is just a really cool and fascinating thing that Retro Studios, Higher Ups, and Nintendo never gave any attention to, but this guy had a really cool idea. I highly recommend just go ahead and check out the Digino you know Gaming video. It's really worth a watch. Puts a lot into perspective about what I've been talking about this entire video, so uh, give it a look at, and uh, we'll finish up my video. All right, <laughs> that's a lot of stuff. I'm going to stop going there. The point of all that was that Nintendo is simply sitting on a literal fucking gold mine of possibilities with Star Fox. New audiences of literally all ages could become new fans of the series if Nintendo could just get themselves to care about it again. The only reason Star Fox is outdated or irrelevant is because Nintendo decided to make it so. What I've presented is just a tiny, tiny fraction of what's possible. Some of you guys watching probably have some even better ideas in your head. 
and 99% or more of us aren't even game developers. The ideas are there. It would just take a team that cares enough to build the best ones up together and see them through. Let the characters go through some intense scenarios that make you want to see them succeed and feel bad when some surprisingly dark things happen to them. Nintendo could easily expand upon the Space Combat core while staying true to what makes Star Fox, Star Fox. <sighs> At the end of the day, it's really sad to me that Nintendo doesn't see the potential in Star Fox. They don't understand a single thing about their own franchise, and the only exception is a single game that released almost 30 years ago. And even then, they really only understand the basics. Imagine if they just kept remaking Zelda 1 on the NES as is with some new control methods. That's how it feels to get Star Fox 64 over and over again. But each time, as you might expect, it loses a little bit of its luster. Their understanding of Star Fox is like if somebody told you that they understood what someone's house is like because they looked at the blueprints before the thing was fully built. But if you were to truly understand it, you'd have to actually see the thing in person. You have to know how the house could be potentially expanded or improved in a way that makes sense. What could be done inside the already built structure to make it more comfortable and homey and fun to live in. And if the house is fucking old, it's gonna be a hell of a lot more exciting for people to visit it if it's been updated in some significant way. Whew. All right, rant over. I think you guys get it. Nintendo, the way every series needs to be handled is different. I don't believe every franchise they've ever had needs to make a grand return. We don't need Urban Champion to make a comeback. But they do need to do a better job at analyzing each different franchise and what's possible. Star Fox in particular needs to continue because so much more can be done with its very concept. The fact that it hasn't been tapped at all since 2005 in any significant or meaningful way is honestly kind of embarrassing. You've done such an incredible job with Mario and Zelda, guys. You can give Star Fox its chance to shine, too. I love this series so dearly, I could say so much more about it, and I just want to see Nintendo give it the love and care it deserves again. Maybe someday. Watch this video get instantly dated like Nintendo just suddenly drops a new Star Fox game announcement next month or something. That'd be just my luck. I just really hope to see you and your friends soon again, you silly space fox. Uh, outside of Smash Brothers. Yeah, just, we, they're in Smash Brothers, but, you know, aside from that, yeah. Okay, bye. <laughs>